Today we're going to look at a bunch of the new things in Elementor 3.7. Most notably, we have a Stripe button now to join our PayPal button, which we've had for a very long time. We also have notes capability, which allows your team or your clients to leave feedback directly in the Elementor editor to help the design and iteration process flow more smoothly. And we also have changes and updates to WooCommerce features, including cross-sells, upsells, add to cart pages, account pages. And there's also been the addition and or expansion of over 100 different dynamic tags inside Elementor. And those have been applied to 24 different widgets. We'll take a look at some of those in this video as well. And all of these updates are for Elementor Pro. And if you don't have Elementor Pro yet or thinking of getting it or after this video, you're convinced it's awesome. There's a link in the description down below that you can buy it through. And it's an affiliate link. If you buy through that link, I get a part of the sale. It does not make it more expensive for you. It's just that Elementor shares part of the sale as commission, which helps me keep making these videos for free. So if you buy through the link, thank you very much. And with that out of the way, let's check out the Stripe button. In the search bar over here, got our Stripe button, drag and drop that. And this is it right here. It's not too exciting, although it is kind of exciting. If you don't like PayPal or can't use PayPal, maybe you can use Stripe. And the Stripe button, as well as the PayPal button, which has been around for a very long time, you can sell one-off products. Maybe not one-offs, but let's say you don't have enough products to have a whole WooCommerce store. You just have a handful of products. You can use these Stripe and PayPal buttons to sell them, more conveniently for you because WooCommerce is a bit of a beast and if you just have a few items it's overkill. So these Stripe and PayPal buttons help with that. To integrate Stripe we have to go to our integration settings which it notes right there. So if we go to the main website dashboard and we head into Elementor settings and then click on integrations and scroll down to the very bottom we have our Stripe integrations here. To enter, to enter your test secret key you enter it right here. You can click this link. If you're logged into your Stripe account, it takes you right to the link, the live secret key. Click that link to get to it. And then once you have those in there and they're validated, save changes, and you can now use Stripe with this button right here. And once this has been integrated, you can actually go down here to additional options and choose the Stripe test environment. So once you set up the button, because you have entered a secret or a test secret key right here, you can make test purchases to make sure everything works how it should. Super important. The stuff we can set up for the button. We can have a product name. Let's call it light bulb. I actually found a bug as I'm making this video. If I now delete this product name and then leave this field, it just pops it back in. You can change it, but you can't actually delete it. Maybe that's a bug. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's add a picture of a light bulb just to make this more interesting. There's a nice light bulb. Let's just add a couple columns. And this might be how you have this button set up with your product image. And if you're new here, my name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. We help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. So if you like the kind of thing, make sure you click subscribe and smash the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave it down below. I try to answer them the best I can. Now let's get back to it. You want to make sure you have the right currency. I believe this currency does not have to match your Stripe account because Stripe can accept all kinds of currencies. So whatever currency is paid in is what's going to go into your Stripe account. Not 100% sure on that. I, mean, I want to check. Available currencies include a lot of currencies. So pick the one that's correct for you. Give it a price like five dollars. You can assign various quantities to what you have here. You could even have different the different buttons. See, this could be the the buy one button, and we could call this uh, buy one. Now, let's take off the icon, and you could have a, a second button. Just duplicate this, and maybe you want to have them be able to buy five. There, buy five. Let's call those bulbs. Buy five bulbs and buy one bulb. And in that way, you can have very specific buttons set up for various things because WooCommerce 
would have quantities built in. The stripe button doesn't by default. So you have to make different buttons for different quantities if you even want to have different quantities. You can set a shipping price, you can add a tax rate, and you can manage your tax options inside your Stripe account. It shows where right here, go to your Stripe account, go to products, and then tax rates, and then you can pick the appropriate one. These will be pulled in once your secret keys and your live keys are validated. You can pick the appropriate tax rate, pulls it in from Stripe, and we can center these under the button options. We have the Stripe icon from the library. You can also add other icons from the library. You can upload your own SVG icons. You can change the spacing of the icon if you have one. You can add button IDs for extra CSS capabilities or even JavaScript. An important additional option is redirect after success. So if they click on this button and they successfully purchase, they're then redirected to whatever page you have here. And this is like a thank you page after they purchase or maybe an upsell page if you have a sales funnel type of sequence. There's the test environment option. Make sure you test your purchases first and then make sure you turn that off when you go live. Open Stripe in a new tab. It's always a great option to have is yes. You can have custom messages, custom error message, Stripe not connected message, and this is not default. This is from the happy add-ons plugin. So with the new Stripe button, we get pricing and payments button and additional options, all of which we just covered just now. After the Stripe button, a cool new feature is notes. If you go to the hamburger icon, there's a notes button right here. Click on that and we have our notes panel pop up. And then we can click on any element. It drops a little icon and then you write something. So for example, I would like this light bulb to be more yellow. You can leave a note and that leaves it there. Written by me shows when it was posted. And we can also edit the notes. And inside of the notes, you can tag people. If you add the at symbol, it brings up everybody who is a user inside of this website's WordPress dashboard, which might be you and your team or your outsourcers and your clients. You could all be listed here and they can just click on whoever it is to add them to this note and they'll be notified or at least they'll, they'll show up more, um, more plainly to see in the notes list on the left here. If I click on it, let's see if it takes us somewhere. Let's add another one. This looks great. Uh, I don't think it actually shows uh, a specific list, but I, I feel like if, if I were to log on or if you were to log on and this note wasn't attributed to you, it might be at the bottom of the list. I'm not entirely sure. Either way, you switch between notes just by clicking them over here. You see a whole list of notes. You can see the notes that are just on this page, or you can see the notes that are all over the site or only my notes, so there it is. So maybe, oh, these are notes that you created. So only your notes will be the ones that you made. All notes will be everybody's. And show resolved and show unread only. These ones currently show as red. There's an eyeball here, seen by Bjorn. To resolve them, click on the check mark. To reply to them, reply to them here. Let's say, good idea. Now we have a reply thread going, which your whole team can be a part of, including your clients, which is super convenient. And the resolve is only for the very first note. The very first note would normally be an action item. And the discussion for that action item will be down below. We can also mark as unread. We can edit, we can copy the link, and we can delete it. I'm going to resolve it. And now it is a little grayed out, and it's resolved. Not grayed out number two is not resolved. And then from this list here, we can choose to not show the resolved ones. So check that all the resolved ones go away and all the open tasks are still seen. And these notes can be done all over your website on all pages powered by an Elementor editor. Currently, this is not available on the front end. There's some tools like user feedback and some other ones where clients can come and leave notes right on the front end of a website, which is way more convenient for the clients. They don't have to log in anything. Anybody who wants to leave notes using this notes panel from Elementor, they have to log into the site and then open the Elementor page and then leave notes on that page. So it's a little less convenient than the other feedback options, but it's still pretty handy. And it's the first version. They might iterate to have this work on the front end eventually as well. So that's the notes panel. When you close out of it, all the notes are gone. They're not published to the front end. If you publish the page, they're only visible for people who click on notes here and then want to actually view the notes. Now let's move on to the WooCommerce editions. 
These are more tweaks, I'd say. Some of them are pretty advanced though. For example, if we add the cart widget to the page, to have these WooCommerce widgets, you have to have WooCommerce installed on your site. So if you don't have it installed yet, you're not gonna see any of these widgets I have here, but you can still see what I'm showing you. For the cart page, we now have the ability to add a coupon. Currently the cart's empty, so there's no coupon field. But if the cart did have something in it right now, there would be a coupon field because we have show coupon turned on. In addition to adding the coupon to this page, we can also have cart empty, which we currently see here, as a custom template. If we go to additional options and turn this on, we could choose a template from here if we have one created. And we create this in Elementor, back in the dashboard, Elementor templates. We can create specific templates to replace this empty cart, which is pretty boring looking. And this will allow you to add more branding to your store, which is great. And we have a similar option for the coupon on the checkout page now. So if we add the checkout widget, we have a new coupon tab. This is the coupon box on the right over here. We can turn that on and off. And we also have the ability to add a template like we do for the empty cart to the my account page. So if I open that one, if you've used WooCommerce before, you've seen all these pages. If you haven't, these are the stock pages pretty much that you see here. And the my account page is, in my opinion, not the best looking page. It could be greatly improved. And now it can be improved by anybody using Elementor Pro because now we have under additional options, the ability to add a template. You'll be able to keep all these buttons just as they are, just add them to your new template. Or maybe you're not selling downloads, so you don't need to have the downloads button. Or maybe you're selling only downloads, so you don't need the addresses section. So you can customize this exactly how you want, not just reorder these links, but you can create a complete page template using the Elementor Templates Builder. You just find the template here, and it'll replace the My Account template. So it can be completely branded to your store, which is super. And continuing on in WooCommerce, there's been an update to the Products widget. So if you look up Products, drag and drop this guy in here. We have now under the query, we can choose related products, upsells, and cross sells to be the ones that are shown. Related products and upsell products, those are separate widgets as well. So up until now, they've been separate widgets. So if I go back to our widget library here, we have related products and we have upsells right here. We do not have cross sells. That was not a thing before, but now it is added to the, this query anyway. So you can choose to continue using the related and upsell widgets if you want, which means you have to style them all separately. We have to style the, the product widget if you have one, and then the related products widget one separately, upsells separately, and cross sells you have to do in here because it's not a separate widget. But if you stop using the different widgets, it'll save you time because you can just have one product widget, you just change the query and it just fills in the correct products based on your query, and you don't have to worry about the design, which saves a bit of time, which is great. So those are the big additions to the WooCommerce related pages and templates and widgets. We also have additions for dynamic content, a lot of them, over 100 different dynamic content tweaks and additions across 24 different widgets. For example, let's say we wanted to add a, a button, just a regular button, not a WooCommerce button, not a Stripe button, not a PayPal button, just a regular button. We can go to dynamic options and we can choose add to cart. And now this regular button is now an add to cart button. And this allows you to improve your workflow. You don't have to add a whole product widget which has the add to cart button incorporated. You can create your own designs and have complete creative freedom. You just add a button somewhere to your design and make it an add to cart button, which is super slick. Inside your forms, you also have the ability to now populate customer data. So this is a regular form here. And then on the left here, we have a list of fields. Open whichever one you want to populate dynamically. Let's choose name, go to advanced. For default value, choose user info from this big list of dynamic content here. And then click on this little wrench. 
for field, choose first name. And these fields you see here, these are the fields available in the WordPress user section of your WordPress dashboard. So every user that exists on your site can have on this website these fields that you see here. You can add as many fields as you want to the user data using various plugins. I have a tutorial for expanding the fields you have available to users in the card above and the description down below if you want to check that out. I'm going to choose first name and this will pre-populate the person's first name if they're logged in and if they're on this form page. If those two things, if those two things are true, it's going to pull in their first name from their user record inside WordPress. And if they're not logged in, the form will just appear like it is right now. And you can customize all these things, the labels and placeholders and stuff over here under content. So if they're signed in, they'll see their name. If they're not, they'll see the default form. And then email, we also have the same options available under user info. And then wrench, choose email. And in this case, I'm signed in. I don't have a first name set for me, but it's pulling in my email address. So that's pretty skookum. If you want to have faster, better user experience and most of your users log into your site, this is a great way to do it. Going back to WooCommerce, I probably should have covered this first before I did the form, but similar to how we had this button here, a regular button that we changed into an add to cart button, this is a regular image widget. As you can see, just image, just a regular image widget. We can change this to pull in a WooCommerce product image. Go to dynamic tags, choose product image, and then choose the wrench. This part's very important, otherwise it's not gonna pull anything in. Click on the wrench, then you choose which product you want the image pulled in from. And then you can customize everything you need. I forgot to add that earlier for the add to cart tag that we added here. Click on the wrench, and then you choose which product you wanna pull in for that add to cart tag, otherwise it just adds nothing to the cart. So make sure you, for all the dynamic tags, you add them and then make sure you click the wrench to choose specifically what you're adding dynamically for that specific element on the page. And we also have some updates to the navigation icons. Just add the nav right there. So if I switch over to, let's go to mobile mode tablet, we have our hamburger icon. And if I click on it again, we have the hamburger icon used to open the menu. It turns to an X. To close it, you can change these now to whatever you want. So under normal, that'll be the hamburger icon version. We can upload an SVG or we can just choose an icon. Let's just make it plus with the circle. Now it's a plus with a circle. For the active state, let's add, oops, let's add just a plus with no circle. Now, if I click on this with a plus with the circle, plus without the circle. So you can change these icons to be whatever you want now, which is not available before. And in addition to this, there's over a hundred different dynamic tag tweaks and changes, which is a lot. It's more than I can cover in one video, but similar to how we can now add dynamic product images here, dynamic add to cart buttons, the dynamic tags, really expand the dynamic capabilities of Elementor a lot. And to dig into those, there's a couple links you can go to. I'll add those in the description down below. And you can check out what tags specifically are being added and where they're being added. So you can find out whether or not that's something you like. And even for all the other stuff we covered in this video, I'll add links to places where you can check out more information on all of them down below. So read more about which one interests you. If you want to get Elementor Pro after watching this video or just in general, there's a link to that in the description down below. It is an affiliate link. If you buy through that link, I get credit for that. So they send me a small commission, but it does not make it more expensive for you. But thank you very much if you do buy through that link. It helps me keep making these videos. Next up is watching this video right here where I show you how to speed up Elementor beyond what you might think is possible. So make sure you check that out. And then after that, check out this playlist right here. It's all about Elementor Pro. If you use Elementor Pro or think you might want to, this is the playlist for you. So make sure you check that out. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.